Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. I have to leave this room because there are many things we need to do. We are coming to a close. We are closing very quickly in on what we need to find out. But before we do that, I believe that this check might have reopened. I haven't checked it, but I believe it might have, so I want to have a look. Hello, Kuno. Fuck, there's Kuno oh, here! it's locked. Okay. Well, I think we can we, we, we can definitely reopen it. We have enough stuff. I want to get our empathy equipment on, and then I want to talk to him. So let's do that first. Uh, empathy, 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 empathy. There we go. We have shoes that give us empathy. Nice. I mean, they're not, but you know. It's nice that we have them. Anything else that gives us empathy, or is it just the shoes? I think it's just the shoes that give us empathy. Are we at empathy one? We're at empathy two. So we already have something that gives us empathy? Yeah, we have the, we have the book. Okay. Let's raise our empathy. Are we doing a thought right now? No. Okay, just thought I'd check. I'm gonna raise our empathy by one. Go. We're empathy nine. So we have a lot of empathy. Fuck, there's Kuno here! 83%. Let's go. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno Knees. Interesting, how? Kuno Knees is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno Knees was the one who wound him up and directed him. And Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you. He even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Kuno, come over here. Psst. Fuck you talking about? Fuck you whispering about? He whispers back. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you whispering about? She puts extra stress on that word, expecting it'll make you uncomfortable. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? He turns back to you and hunkers down. Let's whisper, pig. This is it, you've got him. But be careful, you can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Um. Well. Kuno, listen to me. She's trying to control you. We gotta get out of here. It's okay. He straightens his back and turns to Kuno knees. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it, you let him off the line. That was bad. That was a bad manipulative thing to say. You should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Tried to fuck my Kuno? A giggle, malicious and lethal. She pulls herself higher up on the fence. Tried to fuck my Kuno away. Me and Kuno are tight. We ride for life. Let's try and figure, once more to figure him out. Try to find a way to connect with him. Because we talked about the kingdom. We get a bonus here. You were too pushy last time. Think this through. Really try to understand the psychological bond between, uh, between Kuno. Psychological bond between Kuno and K Kuno Knees, or uh, that Kuno has with Kuno Knees. Okay, so what's the deal with Kuno Knees? Just look, while Kuno has no problem being near you, she always hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something something very bad. You know, the scheme, and the top talking to you, it's the same thing. Kuno. Fuck you whispering about. Yeah, okay. Um... Well, what's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Crazy, he whispers tensely. You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. He's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him. Kuno, I'm fucking warning you. You're gonna get us into shit. She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see. He pops his head up. Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. He hunches down again. Talk pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He even turned his back to her so he, she can't read his lips. What do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone like, right, sees a killer? He stares at you intently. Like, actually a killer? 
His little green eyes are fixed on yours. He meant everything he said before, but right now he not only means it, he is sincere. Um, you serious about this killing business? Killing is serious shit? Who knows how it's serious about the four... Uh, about the 488? 488, the criminal code doesn't go higher than 190. She probably killed a pig too? I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Okay, how many cops has she killed then? Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. A cop would be too large for her to overpower, but a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable, the elderly, the homeless, or other, other children. The creature peers at you uh, from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. I like how she's now the creature. Kuno, do you think it's possible she killed other children? Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, uh, yeah, that's what Kuno's starting to think, yeah? Think she has anything to do with the dead man? Do I have to specify which one? Kuno wasn't around and C was with Kuno. Told you this already. Where were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. You said she's insane? Yeah, she's psycho. He leans in even closer. None of that kitty psycho cat burning shit. She does the real deal. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. And he doesn't even want to think about it. This just isn't another boast. What's that language she uses? Napa Kim... Pai? Bagari? Fuck no. She, only, she says it's the song of her people or some shit. What people? Crazy people, the fucking Nakis. I don't know. Sounds like Boreal. Like something from Tundra and Tagia covered Katola Asola. Far, far away from here. As far as possible, really. Do they have red-haired people there? You mean uh, evil red, little red-haired people there? Yes, they do. The Suris have that ginger gene. Who know, could she be Suris? Suris, like that man from Hemla's Jal shit. The kid lights up. She could be. She could be that him Jal shit. Revishal does have a small Cerise community, or she climbed in a yakberry crate and was shipped over accidentally. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in, like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. He points to the apartment building behind the fence. What was that, Kuno? The little one twists her neck, looking at the building. Kuno flinches and lowers his voice even more. She was in the hallway, dripping wet. By the fucking shoe rack in the dark. A shoe cupboard just off to the right? Have you been to this place? The hallway there with the ja janitor's clo uh, closet. Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Why was she dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days in the corner. Every time Kuno went out... You said she got in. How? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno come home and she's sleeping under the desk under a pile of clothes like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Thinks it's fucking Kuno. Wants to at himself. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno. Kuno knees. Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno knees then? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. You don't know her name? No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was. I told you this shit was psycho killer. How are you dealing with all this? Who's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. See, he doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. He spits through the gap in his front teeth. Um, you need back. Well, she needs professional help. You well, you need backup. I'm here for you. Listen, listen. He points to his eyes, then yours. Sees. It's Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting you. You fuck with C, you fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. The boy looks you in the eye. Black pupils trying to focus. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna run when you put the cuffs on her. Sneak up later and fuck you up. You understand? I can respect that. Alright. He wipes the sweat off his brow. Now we can do business. Business? Yeah, what do you want? Kuno can hook you up with, he starts, no longer whispering. Don't hook him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax, he respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno, you gotta respect the Kuno. He turns back to you. 
you all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, kid, kid pig. Get you, get his hooking you. And Kuno's gonna get you hooking for more cash in big style, pig hooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we're releasing. He pulls on his tracksuit trousers. The pant buying shit. That's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Um, Kuno, fle Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. He spreads his hands like a baker presenting the goods. A smile spreads across his flushed face. We can get Savoir Fair and Physical Instrument Modular Track Pants for only 15. Not bad. What's that about run um, running you an errand and illegal mar narcotics, Kuno? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. His eyes bulge, their veins reach out like tree branches. This is where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is Kuno and his dad are had a little falling out. Now junkies are clawing at Kuno's door. Street's going mad. Kuno's going to throw his dirty Popo Man at it. Okay, okay. Dirty Popo Man is you? He nods at the building behind him. In there is Kuno's violent dad. On steroids, Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half the speed. Who's your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He says proudly, he's the most violent man in Revishal. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing, he drinks too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishal in your condition? How much material are we talking about? Like half, he says very confidently. Half of what? A baggie, but like in this vial? That's half a gram, sir. Half a gram? Yeah. His confidence is unwavering. Half a G, you want it or not? That's not very much material at all. Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. I made up my mind, Kuno, and this is what's going to happen. Okay, Kuno's listening. Um, well. Let's see. Um... I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going in. I'm going after the most violent man in Revishal. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. He gracefully points at his eyes. Go to room 12. First floor. Kick down the door. Place violent style. Kuno style. Then it's action time. You're locked in the room with the violent fuckhead. That's it, he concludes. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have a shit. What the hell are you standing us up for here? Um. Come on, Kim. Obviously, I'm not going to take it. We need to get drugs away from a miner. Okay, then. He concedes. Okay, I'm off. Well, you know what, actually, Kuno? Fuck this Kuno, I'm going to buy your trousers. Kuno unzips his jacket again and pulls the pants out of the plastic wrapping. Here, pig, we flan now, performance buddies. Kuno can already see you soaring through the air like a fucking eagle. He looks at you with pride. Pig's in Kuno's debt now, money debt. Money debt doesn't mean anything. He's just saying words. You're not in his debt. Let's talk about your shack again. Nah, there's nothing else there. Cool. Just want to check. So we have three skill points again, which is real good. We have the pants. Entry level flan modular track pants, meant to get the urban athletes started down the flan path. Label says hydrophobic, 100%, uh, Simon Tech and Flan Morova Lab, creating an air of pseudoscientific mystery around these pants. They feel rubbery and futuristic to touch. So I'm definitely going to wear those. There's actually no negative to wearing those. Uh, let's see, do we have anything that gives us, like, something that might help us in a fight? I kind of feel like this might help us in a fight. The uh, fair weather cuirass. Uh, that seems good. Maybe the flan windbreaker. We're looking interesting now. Uh, anything else? Uh, that lowers our physical instrument. Half-life. Uh, probably not. Drama authority. Reaction speed. Or logic minus perception. Probably reaction speed's looking good. Although, that is the flan helmet, I forgot. So, we need to be matching. That's more important than uh, survival, anyway. Oh, glasses. We can put back on our visual calculus glasses. Boots. Uh, I'm thinking we want to put on these boots. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, we're now looking very, very secure in what we're doing. 
Uh, and then we didn't have a neck item that's better, do we? Nah, we only have the bow tie neck item. Or this one. Uh, I think we're fine. Yeah. The reason I wanted to be in full outfit. So when we head over there. Actually, can I do this? This would be so good if I can. Nope, you can't. Okay. I was hoping you could click over the edge there. Right. We can run around. But yeah, now we need to go over there and beat up Kuno's dad. Maybe even kill him. Who knows? Who is Kuno's dad? I'm expecting him not to be dangerous. That's the other thing. Like, not dangerous at all. Can I speak to C now that I know something about her? Trying to sneak up on me again? Trying to snuff me out? Get away, pig! That'll be a no then. Okay. She just doesn't speak. That's fine. So first floor. Uh, and then we need to speak to... Uh, it's number 12. Okay, so this is first floor, I think. Or is first floor the next one? I don't know. Is this 12? 12. There we go. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinge hinges. Secured to the door frame with a sa safety chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr... Uno de Ruter. Uh, looks like we found where Kuno's dad lives, pointing to the bill on the door. Lieutenant nods, and the place comes with three months worth of utility bills. So we could cut, use the cutters on the chain or knock lightly. Let's knock lightly. No response. The apartment numbers have fallen off the door, leaving the panel with a sticky one shaped shadow and a marker drawn too. We need to equip the chain cutters to enter, nip right through the metal. Well, um, I don't really want to do that, but okay. I thought we could knock. Yeah, let's do it. Snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The lynx falls to the ground on the other side of the door. Lieutenant looks worried. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. Quick save. And... Wait, did we ever go in here? We must have, yeah. Okay. In we go. No one's home. What's over here? Well, that's ours, obviously. Just getting some money back. Glossy erotica covers the wall, wrinkled from moisture. Kuno de Ruter is the name on this unfinished homework. Kuno spelled differently, from two years ago. Writing desk. The phone book lies open on a table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped with a straw. Kim, I've located psychoactive substances on this table. Good, confiscate it. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest Lieutenant in the slightest. He listens to something in the other room. Let's take the speed from the table. You pocket the bottle as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Okay, it's a quick save. So I could just go straight back to Kuno now, couldn't I? Yeah. I'm gonna go speak to Kuno's dad. I need to see what's going on here. Ideally, I just want to speak with him, but you know, we'll see. Oh, the air stinks with something sour. A bundle of cloves heaped on the bed, a stained parka, some towels and a duvet, some socks even. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Hold up, Lieutenant, look at that pile of cloves. Hmm, the lieutenant has covered his nose. Slowly reach out my hand. Something underneath there is breathing. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. I'm going to keep extending my hand towards the pile. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive underneath it. It's deep. In suffering somehow. Let's pull the blanket off. You... See a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol and God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down, he's already down. Kim, is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. He points to a fleshy lump sticking out from the other end of the blanket. The limbs seem to be twitching from time to time. And look, the other fruit is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Maxor on the sole. Three toes are poking out of a hole. Maxor is a gas company. He's wearing freed socks from a gas company. They probably came with the bills. 
A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. Let's figure out what he's trying to say. The man groans once again. His tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something. It dawns upon you, clear and surreal. Pigs, he says. He's trying to call you pigs. You're awake! He's awake! His hands fall back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's asleep again. At least he got to say his piece. Um, is this Kuno's father we're seeing? Judging by the colour of his hair, I say it. I would say yes, it is. Lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. Um... I can't believe it. Kuno's dad isn't a loser. It m must be someone else. Are you saying a man who looks like Kuno broke into his father's apartment and passed out in his father's bed? This man won't be feeding his family any time soon. Not that he was, but Lieutenant thinks to himself, at least he won't be beating his son. A pair of half open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark. Uh, staring back from the dark, empty and... A pair of half open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty, and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, whatever. Um. Hold on, what happened to his eyes? Can't you tell it happens to exceptionally committed substance abusers? They fall asleep with their eyelids still open, not a pretty sight. Um. Well, he's gonna sleep it off. I know this shit. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth, along with a strong stench of alcohol. Fucking vampire. Look, he's trying to communicate. Um, maybe we should help him somehow. What is there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke in his own vomit, but he's already on his side. Excellent form. We could take him to the remedy, uh, to remedy or Saint Baptiste. But he doesn't have money for medical services. The almshouse would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'll be dead in a few. The lieutenant stops listening to him. Years? Months? Weeks? The pile of blankets grunts miserably. I took your amphetamine, old man. Silence. Only heat emanates from the sleeping body. Let's leave. Okay, so we have taken down Kuno's dad, I guess, in a way. We now have it, the uh, a speed bottle, which gives us Motorix minus morale. How convenient, someone has equipped this tiny bottle of amphetamines with a straw. It's a lorry man's speed on the go. Right, well, now we know that, we can go and speak to Kuno again. And we're not going to give him the drugs, obviously. That would be bad. Kim would not be impressed. And really, that's my main concern in life, is whether we can impress Kim or not. So, let me just turn back into our old outfit, because obviously we don't need these clothes that I prepared in. I might keep the trousers on, though, because they're actually relatively good for us. So we'll switch to that. Switch to drama. Probably. Uh, anything else? I, I forgot to wear my empathy coat. I could wear my empathy coat if I'm speaking to him. But I think we'll stick with this right now. We don't really need the empathy coat. And the shoes will switch back to our perception shoes. There we go. We can keep the bolt cutters in our hand. It doesn't really matter. Because, well, once we get round there... I see... Ooh, can I do this? No, it tries to do a straight path. It doesn't work. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't really matter because there are no bottles to pick up anymore. Because I think we've been everywhere. I think from now on in the game, it's talking to people we've already talked to. Because, well... There's only so many people where it could be. I think the only person we haven't talked to is Ruby, and then if Ruby is not the killer, potentially the killer, but... The only way a mystery works well is if we know the killer from the start. So it's either Ruby, because we know about the footprints, or it's someone else that we know. That's the way I think it's going to be anyway. Hey, Kuno. Fuck, this Kuno key! I took care of the drug situation. Alright, so you got Kuno's kilo? He rubs his hands together. Here's how we do it. First you give Kuno Kuno's kilo, then Kuno gives you his half back. 
That's how we split it. It's the best way, street way. Are you going to ask how I got past your dad? Word on the streets you sent your little friend dressed in as a hooker. Distraction style, that's some sick shit. He nods approvingly to Kim. Not a single muscle moves on the man's face. Kuno wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo. He leans in. Then we shoot the shit. By kilo you mean gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means gram. Um, well. I'm keeping it. You don't need more drugs. You're 12. Alright, he taps the side of his head. Kuno knew you'd try that sneaky pick shit on him. Tell him, Kuno. Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. He squints at you. So Kuno's gonna give you one more chance. Know this, pig. The shit is major. Major fucking choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. This is fucking domino shit. It's hard to see how not giving the boy a bag of amphetamine would cause some catastrophic cascade response. Hard to see, but easy to feel. Somehow this will change things. It's not hard to see at all. You hand out drugs to the kid. The lieutenant's faith in your judgement will diminish significantly. What, if any, is the downside of not giving the drugs to Kuno? None that you can see. No, you can see it. The young man has junior officer material in him, in another life where he trusts you. Tick, 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 tick. The boy flicks an imaginary domino piece with his index finger. Decision time, what's it gonna be? You gonna fuck the Kuno? Um, this is staying with me. Alright, alright, he throws his hands up in the air. You fuck the Kuno, everybody. Kuno got fucked by his pocket pig. Just when we were getting our business on, the pig throws it all away. There's no logic in giving the 12 year old the drugs. I, 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 there is no logic in it. Like, give him the drugs because one day he might be a policeman. No, that's not a choice. I told you he can't be trusted. I told you, I told you. Little rat repeats it six or seven times. I told you he'd steal the shit. Relaxy, we've got plenty of kilo. Kilo underground in the tree. This ain't about that, he turns to you. This is about you and Kuno. You mismanaged this shit. Now everything is fucked between us. How are you going to make this up to Kuno? The Kuno, huh? There is genuine disappointment below the act, sire. In truth, Kuno doesn't really believe there's anything you can do to make up for this. The damage is irreparable. Um. Well. There was a textbook with your name on on it in the apartment. Yeah, he turns even redder. So fucking what? It says Kuno, not Kuno. Kuno de Ruter. What are you talking to Kuno about that kitty shit? I like it. Kuno de Ruter. He's trying to fuck you again. Fuck out of here. Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. Kuno can change his name to anything. Kuno changed his name into fr. Don't change your name into that, Kuno. Kuno, I met your dad. Yeah, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? Um, well, it was what you said. Kim dressed up as a hooker, fooled rag, distracted him. Lieutenant flashes you a sharp look, but doesn't say anything. Fuck out of here, Kuno made that shit up to demean you. His eyes move between you and the lieutenant. Look, pigs, Kuno gets it, you... Don't want to talk about it. Close quarters combat shit. Kuno doesn't even want to talk about it either. Combat trauma shit. He adds after a few seconds of somber silence. Kuno, your dad is a half-dead alcoholic. He was sleeping under some clothes. What? His eyes become large and round. Fuck right, Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. He snaps back. Kuno told you Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit. There's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knows this. He points to himself. Kuno's fucking violent. Fiend's dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you'd have a way in narrow window. Kuno's window. Um. Well, whatever scary thing he might have been. Well, no, let's not say that. Um. Stop acting tough, kid. You don't have to be scared of him anymore. Kuno's not. Tr Fucking trying to be tough. He pushes on bravely. This shit is real. Kuno's fucking violent. Dad's gonna be a vegetable. Kuno knows this shit. Strokes shit. Stomach fucked up. And Kuno's gonna go out like that too. Gonna be just like Kuno's violent dad. Speed shit. Crime shit. Fucking on the bed. Go out Revish West Revishall style. 
Stop saying all this sh sad shit, Kuno. The whisper comes smaller than usual. There's a touch of grief in there. What are you talking about, sad? The kid breathes in and out like a boxer. Kuno's got hard shit. Punches the air. Death shit. Nothing shit. Um, You don't have to turn into that. He punches the air again. Get your fucking non-ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. Another punch. You think... Because you took Kuno's speed, Kuno's gonna sob like a fur. Turn into... He pants from exhaustion. Kuno isn't turning into that shit. Kuno is. Kuno is that shit. Kuno won. You won, Kuno. The relief is palpable. The little hat jumps up and down behind the fence. He did not win. There's a crack in there now. It's spreading across his face like a certainty. I looked around in there. It's not an easy life you've got going on in that apartment. The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans. There were tons of unpaid utility bills there. Fuck right, there were fucking three years or some shit. Um. Well, that's no place to live in. You have to find somewhere else. That's right, it's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground. Le Royum shit. Ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. Yeah, in a tomb, Kuno. The little one seems overjoyed at the prospect. I didn't. I did right not to give you the drugs. Let's conclude this. I think change shit, pig. The only thing. The only made things worse. Fucking social worker shit. It doesn't work, pig. It doesn't work, Kuno. Only our shit works. She tries to bind her fates together. She needs them bad. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Wow. We got nothing out of Kuno. We, we got nothing out of Kuno. What about C here? Anything? I'll die before I squeal, pig. Child, converse with me. Murder was the case. Was the case they gave me. She has almost vanished behind the fence. Only the top of her hat remains. So we have nothing about Kuno. At all. Something opened here? I don't think so. I think we're done with Kuno. We know everything we need to know about Kuno. Okay. Wow. Well. That was just another depressing aside, but hey, with that, I think it's time to end the episode. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.